everyone welcome to the second part of this um video which is from maria trolley's flora and we are using the arteza um, um expert <laughs> pencils today now same as we did for the last one now if you didn't see the first video you can just hop back and watch it and then come back to this one or watch this one um we're actually going to be doing some uh, some stuff on top of what we did yesterday so actually you might if you're going to color along you'll want to watch the first one first sometimes it doesn't matter but it will today so before i waffle on and confuse you anymore we'll <laughs> start this tree now i'm going to use the same color for this tree as i did for these so starting with the burnt ochre and I should come in a little closer but we don't have a lot of because we've got a lot of tree to do so let's start here I'm just going to do a um a sort of medium layer not too light not too dark I guess to start with and then we'll add the darker colour just like we did yesterday it is just the same thing again but I wanted to um, stop and do this on a new video just because that one was going on a little bit and I feel that um, they'll be about the same length I don't know what, how I can guess but I seem to just have this inkling that if I stop then we'd get to about the same length but I might be completely wrong so <laughs> we'll have to wait and see but I'm going to finish the video today because if my calculations are correct um, it'll be time to do a planner tomorrow I think I think <laughs> but it's quite fun still doing some wintry pictures isn't it I've got quite a lot of wintry pictures to choose from so I may do a few more but we'll see um, how what happens um, it depends, depends what I'm in the mood for, partly, and uh, yeah, how I think it. I like to try and do a mix of books, but I know that most of you um, like Johanna Basford. I know a few of you aren't such big Johanna Basford fans, that's absolutely fine, we're all very different in what we like and dislike, but um, so I like to try and keep a lot of Johanna Basford content and also. Oh. For me I, I do like Johanna's work so there's that is one um, also a factor but uh, we'll just see how it goes um, small victories I've got a lot of pages I want to do with you this year I suspect I will finish the book this year but um, there's still plenty of videos to make from it and actually probably making videos will slow me down in how quickly I'll finish it but that doesn't matter I have to remind myself it's not a race you know the aim isn't to um, rush and finish a book and uh, not not do it well and I know there's a lot of video potential in the book because of the small pictures which is what I like to do for a lot of videos I'm gonna do this bit as well in the same way <clears throat> I'm not sure about those doors and things we'll leave those for now you know like this door frame because it's sort of cut into the wood it looks like so it could be wood color but um we'll just I mean it could be painted so it doesn't really matter and the same as the shutters they could be made of wood but they might not be and the window frames so we'll just leave all that for now because I'm not sure what, whether I want to make them really bright or whether I want them to blend back I haven't really decided. I am wondering, as I'm talking, whether uh, purpley colours like violets might go with the snow, but I don't know, they won't really go with this red of the tree. So mm. this is our chocolate brown. Um, we'll start right at the top here with this branch. Mm, it's not very dark, is it? I'm going to go, I need to put my arm round there so I hope it you can still see but I'm doing just what I did yesterday so making a dark edge and then sort of scumbling it in a little bit trying very hard not to colour on top of the snow brown snow it's not a thing you can get lots of colours of snow 
ever seen brown. Oh, dirt. I suppose, yeah, actually, when I used to make snowmen in my garden, because we used to use the snow from the grass, which was probably a really bad idea. We should have used the snow from the driveway. Um, when you rolled the big giant snowballs for the head and body, it would pick up half the mud off the ground or the sort of mud around from the lawn and that sort of thing. And it was really quite nasty. And I never understood how in movies and films and TV shows, programmes and things like that, the snowmen were always pure white. Of course, it was because they... Um, because it's a film. <laughs> no snowman is perfect. I do remember when I was about, hmm, must have been five, probably, we had a huge dump of snow. It was so exciting because we got, literally, the car was snowed in. So imagine our house is a, um, a semi-detached house. And on the side of the house that wasn't attached to another house, we have a driveway, which um, this is my parents' house, they still live there, which goes all the way to the back of the house and around the corner to the back door. And uh, the car was in the garage, which, so you've got like driveway, house, garage. So the car was in the garage, you've got the side of the house here and long drive. And there was a huge snow drift here across the drive that you, was taller than my dad, who isn't six foot tall, but I think it was probably seven foot tall, this snow drift. And uh, so he couldn't get the car out of the garage. So he couldn't go to work, um, really, because he used to drive to work. He did sometimes cycle, but really he wasn't going to cycle to work in the snow. It would be pretty nasty. I'm going to really try and build up the dark on this edge because we've got a much thicker tree trunk here. Um, so we had all this snow. Now I don't know where the end of this trunk is. It could go on, could stop there, it could go on to hit, you know. But I'm going to do this quite dark here. Um, <clears throat> so he d dug this tunnel through the snow drift so so that we could get to the front of the house. I don't know why we needed to get from the front to the back, why we couldn't just use the front door. Um, but we didn't used to use the front door, we used to go in and out of the back door. I don't really know why. It's a thing a lot of people used to do. Well, in my family at least. Like the front door was kept for visitors and stuff and you just use the back door. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> he um, he dug this tunnel through from the front to the back of the house because he still couldn't get the car out and uh, put all the snow into the garden in the back but uh, my the neighbours' children all went out into the street and had a huge snowball fight and built the most amazing snowmen I thought they were anyway I was probably easily impressed at the age of five but um, it looked soup. They looked super, and um, they. Um, I wanted to join them, but I wasn't allowed to because I was too little. And it was just they were all quite old, you know. They were all teenagers, so um, I wasn't allowed to go out. And, but I was allowed to go and play, just not with them, like in my own garden, so I was safe. My mum could keep an eye on me through the window because she didn't come out in the snow. She came out to do the digging and the, you know, practical stuff, but she didn't come out and play like we did. But uh, it doesn't look like we're going to get snow anytime soon here at the moment. It's just rain, relentless rain. But the temperatures are quite warm, so it's not cold enough for snow. Right. I'm going to use some of the lighter colour again now. I haven't done as much dark brown as I did on the other trees, but... Oh, I haven't done this one. Yeah, let's do this one first. I forgot that one. Um, there's, there's always a lot of snow in Scotland and uh, on northern hills, but just not so much around here. 
sure how to do this. I think I'll just do an evenish layer. Um, but the children still like the idea of a snow day. But um, they reckon if it snows they won't be able to go to uni and they'll have a snow day. But the thing is, because the uni is in a different town, they might not even get snow. Or they might get snow when we don't. So I just don't know what happens. I don't remember, when I was at uni, I don't remember there being any snow days. But maybe there were. I'm trying to just make it darker under here is because there would be some shadow from that big pile of snow on the roof. So I'm just trying to make it a bit dark. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. A bit darker under there. I'm not having much luck today, am I? Actually, the other one was yesterday's video. But it's the same day of recording these. Okay. I haven't made it too sharp. I like to try, if I can, to sort of record a series in one day so that I can remember what I was doing. But it's not always possible if it's really long. Okay, back to our burnt ochre. And let's get to work from the top again. Quite happy with how that looks. And this tree might look a little bit paler than the other one because I've put less dark on it and I don't think that's necessary. I think actually that's a good thing if they aren't the same colour because I think it'd be a bit weird if they're all exactly the same colour because even if they're the same, I was going to say variety, that's not the right word, the same type, still not the right word, of tree, they wouldn't be identical colours depending on their age and you know, obviously this one we're much closer to than the others and things like that. That makes a difference as well. I'm just trying to intensify the colour so we don't get lots of white. I mean, it's snowing. There might be white snow stuck on the tree, but we've got our piles of snow already marked out. So I so have to assume that there's no snow on these. And just work all the way through. It's uh, It takes quite a lot now. Sometimes I find colouring large areas is not the most fun, you know. But it can be quite relaxing because you don't have to keep thinking about which colour to choose. Or you can be thinking about which colours to do for the rest while you're colouring this bit. So it uh, has its pros and cons, I guess. And you can also, with a bigger area, use it for lots of shading ideas and things like that. When with a smaller area, you might only be able to block it in with one colour. So there is that too. What I've noticed is that we've got a much thicker area of dark on this side than on this side. I might need to attend to that in a minute. But we'll get this layer down first. and have a think. It was quite interesting. I've been talking a little about my family party that I went to and someone had observed how crafty people are in the family and I'd never noticed this is chocolate brown. As I say, I'm just going to work this side a bit more. Um, someone, um, one of my cousins makes um, glass. She doesn't well, I don't know if she makes glass, but she does like stained glass, coloured glass, art, really pretty things. Um, one of my cousins um, sews a lot, um, sewing machine. Um, uh, my mum does knitting, crochet. She's also in the past done embroidery and she makes cards. And um, my sister does crochet and her two daughters, my nieces. So there's a lot of art in the family, which I hadn't even sort of really thought about. Okay, I am going to leave the tree like that. I think it's okay, apart from this bit, which again I've forgotten. This is the burnt ochre, just going over it. And we will think about all our details. Now, in yesterday's video I said what colour are rabbits? haven't really thought about it 
So uh, that's something we need to think about. But there we go. Okay. I'm thinking I might start at the top with the squirrel and sort of work down so that I don't sort of forget bits. So here's our squirrel. Now red squirrels are brownie red. I am going to start with the um, sienna brown. Just give it a sharpen. Sienna brown. And do the whole thing in this colour. I'm doing it quite intense. It's not exactly the right colour, but that's okay. What I want to do is to add some black or dark brown after to put a little bit of detail in. It's quite difficult when it's this small. But I'm sure I can find a way. Um, I'm going to use this um, espresso brown first. Need to sharpen it so it sharpens nicely for me. Once I have a few breakages, I get a bit nervous, but it's okay. And I'm going to put, I, I think, in the ears there, be a bit dark, do the bit in the eye. I'm thinking there might be shadows around here. And then I just want to put some strands of darker colour into the tail because they often seem to have some darker bits in the tail like that. Um, a bit of shadow there as well. I feel like I just want to put, my stomach is rumbling, a few bits. Just an hour until lunch time. He doesn't really stand out, does he? I am thinking a bit of white pen um, when I do my white um, to put in tiny fur bits, which will then also help him to stand out. I think I'm going to do that later. Now, house. I just need to, there we go. Now, I haven't thought... I was going to thought about doing purples, didn't I? The houses. We, you've got some really nice ones. I'm going to do the main outside of the house in the lilacs. It's a little bit lighter, I think. I'm just checking it's not too pink. Oh, that's pink. Hang on. I lied. I think we'll use the purple iris instead. It's a bit less pink. I'm going to sharpen it. And so this is sort of outside of the house. We don't have that on our other house. Our other house is actually the tree. So I don't know whether this should be tree colour as well, but I just wanted to add in some other colours because um, we've got so many areas of the same colour. It'd be nice to have something a little bit different. So just, this is, I'm not going to do any other colour, so I'm going to think about just making it a little bit darker under here where there'd be some shadow from that pile of snow like that maybe it'd be a bit darker just here where this sort of branch is overlapping and then under that window I'm just going to darken it all up just a tad so I don't want it to be wishy-washy there we go and now I'm going to use a darker purple. I think, what do we have here? What's that? I think this is the amethyst purple. Oh, it's number 416. I will look them up. I think they inside the lid. Bear with me a minute. Yes, it's written inside the lid. Huh? My pencils are on top of the lid. Um, yes, that's amethyst purple. I can confirm amethyst purple. Now I'm going to use it for the door. And just block it in. Just 
saw it stop raining for a minute, but I'm not sure. It might just be um, wishful thinking, as they say. And I want the darker purple. Um, there isn't really one. They're all like, oh, my stomach is grumbling. I think I used this one. This is the Ube purple. Ube? Ube, sorry. Um, it won't be darker, it'll be lighter for the um, door frame and the window frame. And inside we want a lovely yellow light. Yellow obviously goes very nicely with purple. And I think this yellow, which is our sunflower yellow, which is slightly orangey, I think it will look really welcoming and nice and bright and go lovely with the purple. There we go. Now our chimney I haven't done. Um, can you see it? Let's put it in the middle. I think I'm going to use some of the colours I've used already for the house. I think it would match. So I'm going to use the purple iris again for the pipe work. And this bit. And then that bit in there, let's just use the amethyst. You can't really see the amethyst. Ooh, drop it. <coughs> there we go. So there's our first house. I've got our little, whoops, I'm going to miss out the bunny and do this house because I want to do similar colours, so I need to remember what I've been doing. There we go. We'll go back to the bunny. So we're on amethyst, so that is the door. Because I feel that these are the same house. Or, you know, they both go up inside the tree type thing. I'm not sure about the steps though. Whether to do those in a colour. I think we only. Oh, got this bit of chimney. Now, is that a gap? No, I'm going to colour it in like I did the other one. I want them to look the same. It's probably wrong, but it's, it's fine. Then this is the Ubi purple we used for the frame, door frame. I'm going to use it for this one. I'm going to use it for the step. Oh, the window frame before I forget. Getting a bit ahead of myself, rushing to finish, as I often do. Use it for the steps. But when I think about shadow on the steps, I think the edges would be more shadow. Now, this is the back bit that's going to be darker than this bit because the light will hit this bit like that. And just tidy that up a bit. Ah, uh, this window frame. I had a really early breakfast today. I think that's why my stomach's rumbling. I'm going to use, oh, excuse me, the amethyst, no, the, the purple iris for the chimney like we did on the one up there. Um, yes, because uh, her husband's first day back at work after Christmas holiday, we've been getting up quite late and uh, having a late breakfast. But we haven't been going to bed that late, so ooh, it's quite difficult getting up this morning. But I just knew I had to, and I just did it. But I think by the end of the week, it's going to be getting a bit of a grind. But uh, anyway, at least my alarm went off. I was a little bit worried that it might not. Do you know, I mean, you have this. Ooh. But the thing is, he um, doesn't go that early to work, so it wouldn't have been the end of the world. Whereas had my always been going to uni, catching the. Uh, um, 8 o'clock train I would have uh, been a big disaster had I not been up on time I'm trying to make the outside of the shutter a little more intensely coloured than the inside just to give it some interest there I'm going to use this for the door handle it doesn't really show up does it? it's probably a mistake and we've got our sunflower yellow for the windows don't forget the ones here on the door as well as this one Okay, 
And before I leave this house, I'm going to grab the um, one of the browns. I'm going to use the espresso brown because it's nice and sharp. It doesn't really matter which. And I'm just going to put a bit of shadow underneath this window and just put more under here. Around that, around the door a bit, through the door. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Now we've got a rabbit. And what colour rabbit? Well, I'm thinking I'd quite like a grey rabbit just because we've got a little brown. And it's just introduces a slightly different colour, gives us a little bit more interest in our picture. And I really want a more browny grey, but I'm just looking at what I've got. Hmm, the elephant grey could be a good first choice. So I'm going to grab that. Now the insides of the rabbit's ears are always a bit tricky. Do you do them um, darker because there's shadow in there? Do you do them lighter because... Um, or do you do them sort of pinky colour where you can see the skin? I'm not sure. I think what I'm going to do is having put a light layer across our whole rabbit, I'm going to put a bit of pinky. Um, what have we got? Yeah, I think this pink, this is the pink macaron. Let's put a light layer of this in there. And now, when I'm going, I'm going to do a bit of a darker some darker colouring on my rabbit. I'm going to use the pewter grey, which I'm just going to sharpen. There we go. So here it is, the pewter grey. It's probably a little bit too... I was going for more of a brownie look, but I don't think that's working. I'm going to put some shadowing in, like on this back leg, and here under the chin there, like that, and around this hind leg here, also just at the bottom generally where the snow and the tree will create a shadow, bottom of our face, I like to do a bit under the eye, just looks, makes it look cute, a bit here, and then we can put a little bit on the inside of our ear there. Maybe some fur or hair in there. Now I also want to put some hair on the rabbit. So I'm just going to start drawing a few lines here and there. Sure, think about the direction it would be growing. And just there we go. I'm happy with that. Now, next step squirrel. Um, and stars. So this Jerry Roll 8. Let's just pull this down a bit. So I'm going to put some stars in the sky in little clusters. Like this. Some will look like this as well. Hoping they show up. I think they will. Some will be just one or two. They're not always going to be in a cluster. And obviously stars aren't all white, but it doesn't want to write this pen. I'll just scribble it on my scrap piece of paper. Why do we never do a cluster of five, six or four? Is that always three? I don't know two there. Just to be a bit different. I'm going to come back and do the squirrel in a minute. 
I'm having too much fun doing these. Hopefully I won't smudge them though. Hopefully it's sort of making sense. I'm hoping you can see. And now I'm quite zoomed out. There we go. So there are our sort of starry sky now, squirrel. I want squirrel to have a few bits of white here and there. They need to be very small. So we can see it's like little bits of fur in his tail. And then even shorter bits on his body. Almost dots. And hopefully it will allow him to stand out from the tree a little bit better. It's not perfect. Um, I'm not sure I want to do any more white. We need to do these dots in the snow. I'm going to use a silver. Um, I've got my um, stardust. Hang on. These are my Jelly Roll Glitter Stardust. There's a selection of colours in here. You could use a blue, but I think I'm going to use the silver, which is this one. I'll tell you the number in a minute. It is number 744. Now, if you don't have this pen, any silver glitter pen will do. You could use a plain glitter pen, but I don't think it's going to have quite the same effect. And, and I'm going to go over the top of the snow there so on that line and then on any dots that have been drawn on the snow as well now this as I say this is a silver pen so it's actually writing gel as well whereas if you use just a gl plain glitter pen you only get the glitter and you don't get the silveriness I want the silveriness but it is totally up to you you could also use a metallic silver pen if you don't have a glitter pen um try not to put my hand in the uh, in the uh white um but it's up to you you could use a blue if you think that will work better i personally i don't but it, as i say there's a lot of um a lot of it's down to personal taste so you can do it in the way that you want to. Now don't worry if you aren't exactly covering all of the lines. It isn't completely necessary. You can just um, just do this edge. Um, you can uh, do it your own way. It's not always easy to cover or every, everything. And you probably can't even see that I've done anything. Because I doubt my lamp is picking up any of that silver or glitter. But you might be colouring your own anyway. So here I'm doing all the way across the back. Now you could cover the whole of the snow, all the snow, on the whole of the page with glitter. But there are a few problems with potential problems. Your page might go all crinkly as if you've painted it because you put so much glue or wet medium on the page and uh, it will take ages but you might think it's worth it so it's very much up to you it's just another little thing that you can do <clears throat> but I'm going over all the sort of lines and dots really Just to give the idea that there's some frost there. And you want to work from top to bottom or left to right if you're right handed, right to left if you're left handed ideally, so that you don't smudge your um, pen as you go. It's, um, very easy to do. And it won't look be the end of the world if you smudge particularly white. And what you can do is you can scratch it off after. 
if you have smudged it but it isn't that easy and it's much better not to make the mistake in the first place but if you do you do I'd probably just leave it you usually do I just end up with it on my hand and trying to rub it off oops see there I went miles out not gonna worry so I'm not trying to be particularly accurate when I'm going over these lines and dots. I think it's quite difficult to get it exactly right. So I'm just giving the area some glitter. There we go. Not much longer. Um, where are we? We've not done this bit. All this bit. And if you can draw really well, you could do some footsteps going through the snow. I'd love to be able to do that. You know, from the front door back here or something. But no. <laughs> I guess they'd just be a darker blue. Or some of this blue, but just a bit more intensely coloured, I guess. But, no. There we go. So there is our picture finished. I'm going to tip it to the camera. So you can might be able to see the glitter. You may not, but there it is. Now you can, if you want, put some white on your um, picture. You can put some snow. You can add more snow, or you can put white around the edges because this paper isn't white. As you can see from my piece of paper there, this is cream. But I'm quite happy leaving it cream like that. I think if I try and add white pen to the, I think it will spoil it. Um, so I'm just going to leave it. So there it is, all done. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Happy colouring.